Policy. But right now, my friend who is foreign policy expert and also a former advisor to VP, former VP Dick Cheney, you can find him at dciadvisory.org. Stephen Yates, good afternoon to you. Hi, Dana. Good to be with you. How scared does Austin, Texas need to be? I, to set to, to set people up if they were unaware, all of this, I guess, propaganda, it's the only thing I can call it, coming out of North Korea, they saw this map in, I guess, Kim Jong-un's war room, and he had these little pins on all of these different places in the United States that he would strike. And out of all places, he had a pin in Austin, Texas. Is there some sort of significance that Austin, uh, for, for Austin to have a pin that I am unaware of, Stephen? How, and what is, how serious are they? And is, is there any legitimate legitimacy to any belief that he could actually send a rocket to Austin? Well, I guess I, I would start out with uh, I wouldn't be terribly concerned if I were in Austin, Texas. The uh, the location of that pin probably has to do with it being a capital offense to move a pin that a few a former leader had put in place. And so it might be that it, that his dad put it there back when W was governor of Texas and he had something against the Bush family or something like that. Uh, I mean, really, I wouldn't. I, I don't think that there's any more. To Austin being on the list, then maybe it's a particular number of miles that uh, Louis Farrakhan told them was the right number to get between Pyongyang and Texas. But I, it, you know, in all seriousness, I think that uh, the threat of North Korea is very is very significant. The idea that they would have a three-stage rocket capable of getting the interior of the United States, I think, is at at, le- at least not yet proven. Uh, but uh, the, the risk of proliferation, the threat against South Korea, uh, the idea that they could launch things that are shorter than trying to reach Texas, I think, is clear and present danger. Is there – and we don't really even exactly know what all they have, I mean, unless it's perhaps through China because we have you know, we have absolutely no sort of uh, ambassador – we have no relationship with them at all whatsoever. So we kind of only hear – and I don't even know if I fo- – I, I don't even trust China in this instance. Everything that we know about them comes basically via whatever they put out on their, their uh, communist television or through China, correct? Well, we have a few different angles of vision. We have some Europeans that have diplomatic posts and basically serve those functions for on our behalf if we have Americans that come and go. We have Americans as wide-ranging as people from the Graham Ministries trying to do things through hospitals, mm-hmm. and Greta Van Susteren's traveled with them a couple of times to show some images of what they've seen in North Korea. Uh, we have uh, Americans as diverse as Dennis Rodman. I don't know if he actually qualifies <laughs> as an American anymore. It's so odd. But I love the, that you said uh, that we the have, voice. Uh, we've had documentaries that have been done on uh, people who have escaped. Uh, we've had a few things that have show basically this being one of the worst places on the planet and a, a profoundly pulverized population uh, that, uh, that just really doesn't see reality in any way, shape, or form. In a, way, in a similar manner to the way we do. Right, right. Oh, absolutely. Well, this is, it's, 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 I don't know. I just thought that story, when I saw that, I, I was mixed with half feeling worry that we should be concerned and then half thinking, but, but, but there's a pin in Austin, so I, I don't take them seriously. Then there was the story where they were looking at warships approaching the coast, and apparently uh, they had photoshopped a couple of those ships in place. They pulled in Iran with their rockets. Remember when they photoshopped that? Mm-hmm. that? So I, I don't. I'm not quite sure that I even believe they have any capability. It just seems like they're. It's all based upon tough talk. And because how many years have they been threatening to do something now? Well, that's true. They have been threatening seemingly since the establishment of the People's <laughs> Republic there. But the uh, but the, the sad truth is that they have made dramatic progress in recent years, and their capabilities are very real. If for no other reason, we've been able to verify them by what they proliferated. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's been the issue of what they have in country. We've had uh, American officials famously duped in negotiations there. Most recently, it was Chris Hill and the Bush administration on behalf of Condi Rice that basically bought the same fake deal and got the same fake results. Uh, But they have proliferated real nuclear designs. They have proliferated real missiles. They have developed real nuclear uh, energy facility in Syria that had to be taken out by the Israelis. And the rocket test it had recently was also very real. So they're making significant progress. 
it would be foolish for any of our national security leaders to just assume they don't mean what they say. Right. Now, the fact that they might not be able to do all that they say just isn't a luxury you have when you have a determined, irrational, and increasingly capable force coming out of uh, North Korea. It just has to be a profound distraction for our Pentagon right now. Yeah, absolutely. I want to switch gears uh, to a completely different topic. Caroline Kennedy Schlossberg being selected as the ambassador to Japan. Is this just a legacy award? Yes. <laughs> no longer <laughs> the go. short of it. But I, I think it's sad in a certain way because Japan is an extremely significant country that's often overlooked in America. Uh, it is it is a very large economy, very modern democracy. It's usually attacked by rogues like the Communist parties in in China, Korea, and basically people who try to say Japan today is the same as it was in the imperialist era and try to demonize it when it's been a force for profound good for a number of decades, and really one that we have a tremendous operational by bipartisan and uh, and mutual agenda around the world. And we need to have a serious person with serious experience going and developing that. And so just having it as a trophy stop, I think, really cheapens the value Americans should mm-hmm. attach to this alliance. That's a great point. Uh, well, we'll definitely be watching uh, all of this. Unf- I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if she's as gaftastic uh, in her dealings with Japan as <laughs> Kerry has been with, you know, in general, in his new role. But uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen her as a player in foreign policy, and it just seems silly that just because your father was president uh, once that, and, and because of your last name that you can go ahead and get this position. Uh, again, this is, it just seems to be kind of insulting to Japan. I completely agree. Uh, Stephen Yates, so. you can find him at dciadvisory.org, DC International Advisory. Always a pleasure, Stephen. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Dana. Right. Take care. Take care.